Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome back to another video in the series where we're building patches from scratch on the Korg Op6. So my plan for my next video on the Op6 was actually to start doing some of the deep dives into the various different operator modes. But I had this idea for a patch come into my mind, and I kept thinking about it, and I thought it'd be a really interesting one to explore on the channel. So we'll be doing those deep dives next, I promise. Uh, but first, I just really wanted to explore this patch idea uh, in a video. So the patch that I wanted to create was uh, uh, an e-piano, electric piano patch. There are probably a thousand electric piano patches out there for FM synths. Um, but the specific patch I wanted to make, or to try and make, was an electric piano that was kind of a bit broken. Maybe it was toured extensively in the 70s and then thrown into storage, bad temperature management, and it's been pulled out now and it's, it's working, but it's got weird resonances and it's sort of a bit clangorous and it's a bit fragile sounding because uh, as as nice it is to have like perfect uh, sounds I find that there's a lot of beauty to be to be found in in the fragility uh, of patches as well so that's kind of what I want to pursue today so in the last video when I was making uh, the pad sound I stuck to FM um, more out of familiarity um, in this case, I'm going to stick to FM because I think it's going to be the best way to achieve this particular effect. Uh, so let me just set out the um, basic plan uh, because it's going to uh, tell us what algorithm we're going to start with. So there are going to be sort of two basic sounds that are in, in this patch. The first is going to be a really basic um, e-piano uh, sound just to keep the, uh, the patch grounded. Uh, and the easiest way, the simplest way to create that is, is just with a two operator setup. So just one modulator into a carrier um, with feedback and, and getting some velocity sensitivity in there. You can get a lot done with just that. So that's the first thing I'll need in my algorithm is, is, is a two op, um, just modulator into carrier setup. The other part of the sound um, is going to uh, have a carrier with three modulators going into it, and each of those three modulators are going to be doing a different um, job in the patch. Um, one is going to be creating an overall, overall kind of um, weird metallic resonance to the sound. One is going to create um, some a harmonic overtones that are still related to where you're playing and then there's going to be another one which is just going to create um, uh, an overall uh, tumble change that gets brighter when you hit harder that kind of thing uh, so the algorithm i'm looking for is going to be um, uh, one um, modulator into a carrier and then three modulators into a carrier now i don't know all of the algorithms off by heart but i do know that this exists in here somewhere so let's scroll through until we see it that looks good so we have um two uh carriers here we have so this is algorithm 12 if you're following along uh you got um one and three are our carriers operator two is the modulator for operator one and then operator three has operators four five and six in parallel um, running into it, which is going to allow us to achieve the effect that I hope we'll be able to create. So other than uh, selecting the algorithm, we are just on an initialized patch. So I'm going to bring up my operator three, which is the one that's going to have the three things going into it. Just a sine wave, probably going to stick with sine waves. Probably, uh, we'll, we'll explore maybe um, if, if I think there's going to be some stuff that we can do to make it more interesting. So let's just start with operator three. Uh, we'll go into the uh, so in the mode it's just on FM as standard. Uh, go into its level and go across to operator three, and we'll just choose an appropriate um, envelope. So obviously, an electric piano isn't going to uh, sustain forever at that level, but by the same token, I. I'm not adverse to it sustaining. If you want to like hold out a sound, it just needs to be pretty quiet, I think, when you. Uh, maybe make that an exponential curve, make the decay slightly faster. It's too fast. Perhaps it was okay where it was. Maybe longer. No, that's too long. It's just about getting that feel right. And then we'll also have a little bit of release here um, where things are just sort of dragging off a little bit into the. 
a little bit longer. Yeah, I think something like that. Um, we will uh, adjust some of the velocity sensitivity once we've got the basic sound working, I think. Um, so each of these um, three modulators are going to be doing those three different jobs. So let's start by adding just an overall sort of weird metallic um, overtone. So I'll just bring up uh, operator four um, here and uh, select operator form, we're gonna go into its pitch first. Now, if we wanna have like a fixed resonance to the sound, we're gonna to wanna to move away from the ratio mode in pitch where the the pitch of the, or the frequency of the operator is tracking the keyboard. Uh, and if we just go to fix, then it's just literally staying in one place, which gives you these different uh, fixed overtones. Now we'll probably, turn this down quite low. In fact, all of these will probably be quite low because they'll just be sort of contributing different parts of their character as we go in. But let's try and find um, an interesting sort of bell sound. To a degree, what's going to work here is going to be dependent on the key that you're playing in as well. I always end up playing in C, so I'll, this will be tuned for playing in C, uh, which is an interesting aspect of the patch, I suppose, uh, that you can adjust this to sound right for the music that you're playing. Okay, that's the course, but we don't want to go course. Bring that down. That might work. As well let's let's go with that so three three nine two uh, hertz uh, fixed there now we're gonna have to adjust this operators um, uh, level as well so the first thing we're going to want to do if you listen when I release the key at the moment immediately that overtone disappears so we want to make that release a lot longer We probably want to make the decay a little bit faster so it's a bit more of a pingy attack and drop that sustain. We make it exponential. Yeah, that's getting some, some vibe happening there. Let's go into page two or three, rather, of the um, level here, and let's get some velocity sensitivity onto this. So let's put it somewhere in the middle and see how that feels. So if I play lightly, play hard, maybe raise the overall level, a bit more sensitivity. That's more like it. That's um, that's working okay, I think. So let's bring up the next uh, modulator. Uh, what we'll do with this one is we'll try and create something that is sort of aharmonic, but is still going to be following uh, along with the uh, the keyboard now. So uh, we'll want that in ratio mode, but we're going to want to move away from simple ratio. So a one a one to one is going to create something that's harmonic and we will come back and add one that's going to be doing this sort of general sort of extra harmonic grit but this one we want to go a harmonic so let's um let's go two point something and try and find something interesting
that sounds pretty cool. Um, so again, coming into our level uh, for this um, this operator here, we'll do a similar sort of job. We'll drop that sustain so it doesn't need to stick around so high and drop that decay a bit. And up that release so it doesn't immediately die off with the overtones. And we'll follow the template that we did with the other one as well by introducing some velocity as well. We had to go quite high with the other one, so we'll do the same here. Probably afford to now bring up the overall level of that operator. It's feeling nice and responsive under the fingers, which is something I always look for in a patch. That's, that's working well for me at the moment. So we'll come on to this uh, last operator here, and this is going to be just the general grit when we play harder. I just want it to just ping a little bit harder. Um, so we're going to want to stay with simple ratios with this one, uh, with our pitch. Maybe half. to one's cool as well obviously it's way too much of it at the moment but we'll dial it back and let's try two to one uh, i think that's that, that's given it an, an, an interesting vibe um so let's go into our level here again and adjust our Envelope, a similar sort of idea. We don't want it to sustain at a high level. We want it a little bit pingy, give it some release. And again, uh, we want a high degree of responsiveness to velocity as well. Feeling that, um, I might just with this one here put a little bit of detune just so it wobbles a little bit. Subtle, but it's just adding a little bit of movement without and with. So even the bit that's perfectly in tune isn't even perfectly in tune. Probably drop the level of that one overall, maybe. Yeah, that's uh, that's sounding cool. So the last thing we probably want to do on this side of the voice uh, is just give um, our carrier a little bit of um, uh, velocity sensitivity as well, uh, just to um, not as much as we have for the other ones because there's, there's quite a lot. Of variation going on there but just so that you have that sort of general feel to the sound so we'll try somewhere around 30. Yeah with all the other stuff that's going on that might that even that might be a little bit much. Yeah something like that seems uh, about right. Now, obviously, let's move on to the other operator and, and get that sort of baseline electric piano sound happening in there as well to hold the whole thing together. But first, as a treat, let's head into the effects section because uh, there's something that I've realized this is crying out for, and that is some reverb, but not just any reverb. In fact, we don't want a nice uh, hall reverb. No, 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 that's not going to um, enhance this patch so much. So let's go into our type here and come down right to the bottom where we have our spring reverb instead. And that chirpy. Chirpiness that's adding there and the, and the sort of weird haziness around it is definitely 
much more what we're looking for here. So it's interesting to note on the spring reverb that we have two um, parameters that kind of sound like they're going to affect how long the reverb goes on. We have time and we have length, but they're sl doing slightly different things. So length is changing the length of the emulated spring. Uh, and what that will do is make things sound more sort of delay-y or more sort of short and splashy. So at the moment, somewhere in the middle. If we shorten the length, it sounds much more like a, a, a tank and more of a straight up reverb. Whereas up at the other end, you can hear individual sort of delays in there and it's all diffusers as well but what you have to think about is that uh, the length of the emulated spring uh, the the sound if you like has to travel down to the end of the spring and then back um, and down and back and down and back and the longer the spring is that's going to introduce like an actual delay that you can hear so this is representative of what happens in in the in the real world as well short spring tanks are sort of um, splashy and reverby and um, long tanks tend to have more of that sort of delay and ripple to them. And then the chirp control here is going to enhance that somewhat as well. And as soon as we're trying to make something that sounds a bit broken, I think that kind of chirp there is going to really, really help with that really enhances the, those higher notes and those higher overtones. Yeah, nice. Okay, so let's um, come over to our operators again and bring up operator one. At the moment, it's going to sound like an organ over the top because our uh, level um, envelope here is going to be hanging out uh, at a high sustain. So let's bring that sustain down. And then immediately just adding that sine wave in there. We haven't got any other modulation happening at the moment. Just helps ground our patch. Really, really nicely. So let's um, just turn down this one, just, just mess with the um, overall envelope in isolation. Get that release in there as well. sine wave in a spring reverb is a nice thing. I keep coming back to this fact I just like the sound of sine waves with a short envelope. It's just a very pleasing sound to me. Anyway, um, so let's think about adding a little bit of overtone with our um, with our modulator there. And really, like I say, a two operator basic sound is a good starting point for any electro piano sound. Let's come across to uh, operator two and think about how we can shape it. Again, we probably want to shape that um, envelope in a similar sort of fashion so that things get a little bit darker over time. So I think um, if we come back to the level envelope of this one, we want that decay to be a bit longer. And we can push the output pretty high, I think, uh, because we're going to tame uh, the output of our modulator again with velocity. And again, we'll probably have quite a high degree of that. It, it electric piano sounds already that easy with FM. It's um, even more. So it's barely happening. 
happening when we play lightly. Harder. Cool, let's just put a little bit of velocity um, variation with the carrier as well. So I suspect probably on the higher notes here, as we go up, we're going to find that things are a little bit too brash. Uh, so we will come again, uh, operator two, yeah, we'll be in our level page two, and we will apply some of the operator scaling here. Um, so C4 is probably a sensible center point. So past C4, we want uh, the overall output of our modulator to go down as we go higher so that we get less of that over time, it's probably a bit too much. And conversely, we might actually want it to go a little bit higher as we go, um, or louder as we go down to get a bit more harmonics out on the lower notes. The, this sort of level scaling stuff is, is fine tuning stuff that really helps finesse your patches as you um, make sure that they play well across the entire uh, uh, the entire keyboard. So let's bring our broken sound back in and see how everything molds together now. So um, I think that the attack is just ever so slightly too harsh in a lot of places. So the easy way to do that is just to come um, into the, our two carriers, uh, make sure we're on our envelope here, and we'll just add the tiniest amount of attack envelope. It's just going to soften the overall feel of the onset of the note in a nice way. Yes, that's feeling a little bit more um, pleasant, a little less uh, clicky. I like that. So let's get a little bit more movement in this patch. And the obvious place to, to, to look at that is probably uh, in Operator 2 and just having the level of Operator 2 be affected by an LFO just so you get that kind of um, almost sort of semi-auto-war kind of feel to it. So if we come over to Operator 2 here, we'll take out Operator 3 out just for a minute. Uh, come in to page three of the level for operator two, and we'll just introduce a bit of LFO here. A little bit fast, but it's just the tiniest bit there has made all of the difference to the vibe of that, I think. So we'll come into our mod page, we'll go down to LFO1, which is what is automatically rooted there, and we'll just reduce the speed a little bit. Maybe try a sine instead of a triangle. Probably push it a little bit harder now. Yeah. Um, so uh, I've got this set to key sync common, which means that um, the LFO shape is going to start with the first note that I play down and then all of the other voices are going to follow that. Actually probably what we want is to turn key sync off in this case so that the, uh, the LFO is free running. It's probably 
subtle and much of a much of a muchness but it is more representative of just having like a tremolo circuit that's running in a in a um, electric piano cool this is really starting to come together i think so um I don't think we need to have any filter movement. We don't need to have a filter envelope on this. It's not kind of the patch where we want to have like a funky clavinet kind of thing on. But I think we can probably dial out a tiny bit of the top end just to make things a little bit more smoky. So we'll just bring the cutoff down. So we're trying to create a, uh, a broken electric piano here, of course. And probably the capacitors have gone a bit funny and everything's a little bit darker so without and with uh, of course we have the different filter um, models as well so let's try some of the other low-pass filters so this is the 24 Fed 12 there, this is the MS-20, which overdrives, probably a bit much, I think, uh, Poly-6, which is the one I usually end up using on almost all my patches because I really like it. Uh, honestly, I think this is the basic 12 pole. It's doing a good job there. Yeah, okay, that's uh, that's feeling pretty good. So I think I'd like to get a little bit of stereo movement going in this. Um, I don't think I want to go for like a full rotary speaker effect on it. I don't think, but I think a little bit of auto panning might be nice. Um, now there's an auto panner inside the effects engine, but you can do it just within the synthesis engine as well, just as well. Uh, so I'll do that because I'm not struggling for LFOs at the moment. So um uh let's have a look at our lfos here uh, we can just use lfo three i guess because we're not assigning it to anything else at the moment yeah uh okay lfo three is what we'll use so we'll come into our v patch here and we've got an empty slot here uh we'll go to our eg lfos we'll go to lfo three and our destination is going to be in program and we want to send it to pan so Yeah, immediately I, I really just like that little bit of swimming around that's going on here. So let's just mess with LFO3 a little bit. Uh, key sync, again, if this is going to be a, an auto panel that's happening within uh, uh, within the cabinet of our electric piano, we probably want that key sync to be off, so it's just always running. And we might want to, again, try um, sign instead if we want something that's a little bit swampier. When you're thinking about your modulation shapes for your LFOs, the difference between a triangle and a sine is that a sine spends uh, essentially proportionally more time at the extremities, whereas a triangle just kind of goes through them. It stays in the middle as much as it's staying anywhere else. A sine, because of that rounded shape at the top, spends more time, in our case, at either side of the panning. So it makes things a little bit... A little bit wider in general, but it also makes things a little less sudden at either end as well. A little bit swampier, as I said. Yes, that's really nice. That's um, immediately made me feel a lot happier. Um, let's um, send that via our mod wheel so that with the mod wheel down, we don't get any. And then with it up, we get some nice panning uh, if we're doing that of course we can probably afford to just make it a little bit wider because we've got all this 
points in between that we can work with as well. Yeah, great. Um, do we want to get any other sort of modulation sounds going on in here? I don't think I want to have a filter wobble. I don't think. Ah, so instead, why don't we go into our effects and think about adding a um, um, a modulation effect inside here. Um, so we'll come down to slot two. I think a phaser might be quite nice. Let's try that <laughs> immediately. That's good. deeper, maybe a little bit faster. Yeah, okay, so I don't think this is something we want on at all time again, so I think I'm going to route this via our modulation wheel as well. So what I'll do is I'll turn the mix all the way down for the moment, which essentially turns it off for intents or our intensive purposes, so we'll come into the V patch again, and we'll go to a spare slot. Source, same deal, mod wheel, destination, we want to go to, oops, I've just, no, don't randomize anything. That was close. <laughs> um, uh, what am I doing? Uh, coming into effects, two phaser mix, uh, take it up to 50% when it's all the way uh, up. So with mod wheel down. fun and like that being on the mod wheel as well so we've still got another slot left in our effects and i've got to wonder if we're creating something that's inherently broken whether the obvious thing to add here would be some distortion not that much though uh let's bring that drive oh, wrong knob let's bring that drive basically all the way down Just a little bit of drive. So without and with. If I play lightly, it barely kicks in. Yeah, that's adding a, a lot of vibe. I think maybe a little bit more drive we can afford. It's a bit much up at the top though. Um, so we could use the EQ here. So we have an EQ section and we can find where that harshness is and maybe duck it out a bit. So we'll go EQ all the way down. So the harshness is kind of around there. We'll just tuck it down a couple of dB instead. Might just ride it off a little bit. With the phaser and panning. Still maybe a little bit too much at that top end, duck it a bit more. I think when we go out to the, the top there, we lose a bit of perceived volume. 
I doubt it's getting actually quite a bit that sort of um, carving out of the mid range that the phase is doing is maybe robbing us of a bit of perceived volume. So let's just fix that up. And these are really sort of tweaky stuff when you're building patches, but it, it sort of finesses the patch a little bit. So again, if we set our source as mod wheel and our destination in program and level, we can change the level of the overall program as we move the mod wheel. It's, it's not a lot. But I think it, it improves the overall range of that mod wheel. Anything else to finesse here? Okay, let's um, just go back to our filter now that we've um, added all this modulation stuff and just see whether we can go darker. I think a bit darker makes more sense now in the context of everything. Make sure it's not getting too quiet up at the top. A little bit over modulated up at the top there. I think probably on the on our uh, dirty side here. So let's just really quickly again. It's all about finessing the patches. Come into our modulators here. We'll come into page two here with our key tracking. Probably want to move that center up a bit, maybe up to C5, and we'll just tweak them down a little bit. We'll just try like minus 15 on, on all of them, C5 and minus 15, C5 and minus 15, just make sure it behaves better up at the top here. Yeah, I think so. I think... probably done. That's a pretty nice sounding patch, I think. I will even go as far as to save that one for later. Perhaps I'll turn up in a patch pack. Who knows? So anyway, I hope that was interesting, useful, uh, enjoyable. And if you did enjoy the video, then uh, as always, um, please do hit that like button and make sure you subscribe to the channel, uh, especially if you're interested in the OPSIX because there's going to be a lot of OPSIX uh, content coming in the next few weeks and months. As always, thank you so much for joining me. Till next time, take care. Bye-bye.